Hello everyone, welcome back. Oh, I need my light. Hello everyone, welcome back to Tea and Lit. Um, today's video, we are going to be talking about the brilliant William Shakespeare. So if you are new around here, uh, welcome. And we do a Shakespeare walkthrough each month where we take one of his plays and we just go act by act and talk about it. And um, we just walk through each each play each month. And I really love Shakespeare. Part of the reason I love Shakespeare is that when I was younger, I was a delayed reader. I struggled a lot with reading and it wasn't until I was about 20 years old that I really got into reading and Shakespeare was part of that. Um, the first like proper book I read um, that really got me into reading was Othello. And so we'll be talking about Othello today. Um, but I wanted to put this, this list together because I think Shakespeare can sometimes be hard to approach for a lot of people. Um, I think many of us have difficult, challenging views of it from school and Shakespeare is so honest and one of the reasons that we still care about what Shakespeare wrote was because he was so honest and he was so real and authentic to the human condition. And that's one of the things about classic literature that you've probably heard me say before. Good classic literature is authentic to the human condition and that's why it transcends time and it transcends space because it's speaking very honestly about things that all of us go through and the myriad of Shakespeare plays are definitely like that. So I have seven here with me um, and there are a couple that I have written down that I don't have copies of yet but um, that's just because my bookstore has not, my used bookstore has not had them available to me yet but I do look every time I go. So we'll talk about um, nine plays and why they're great, why they're important, and why they're a good place to start. Um, we'll start with the number one. I think that the number one place to to begin with Shakespeare is probably A Midsummer Night's Dream, and that's because it's one of his more accessible plays. Uh, it's a comedy, and it's very ethereal and enchanting. There's lots of magic and fairies, but it's also, like, you can catch it. It's not... Um, it's not quite as flowy, deep, and complex as the ocean as maybe something like Macbeth. So I think that A Midsummer Night's Dream is a very accessible play that you can start with. I also should say that at some point I would like to do a video um, like tips for reading Shakespeare, uh, tips, for, tips for getting through Shakespeare, but one of the tips that I would say is that Shakespeare plays are meant to be performed. Shakespeare plays are meant to be watched. They are not meant to be read. So one of the things that I very much enjoy doing is to read the play and then see a movie or see the play. It's hard to go see plays because they are very expensive, but if you have a Shakespeare theater near you, um, sometimes they're on YouTube or even specific scenes on YouTube, watch the movies. I know BBC has done several Shakespeare adaptations. See if your local library carries those. Uh, Shakespeare is meant to be consumed through the eyes and the heart, not just through the brain. So um, there's that. Um, now for two of the books that I don't have. Richard III, the first one I talk, want to talk about. It's kind of the pinnacle of his histories. Um, it tells the story of King Richard. Richard III is just like a really bad dude. He's in charge and uh, it's a great read because it's with a lot of Shakespeare, we are familiar with the story. So if you've watched like Netflix House of Cards, Frank Underwood is very much inspired by Richard III. Um, it's a it's a common thing that we've seen, the, the bad guy in charge. And so Richard III is like one of his best histories. So you should totally check that out if you're interested in reading some of his histories. Um, the other one that I do not have with me is Macbeth. Macbeth is quite possibly his best play, um, objectively speaking. <laughs> Subjectively, I believe it's Othello, but that's fine. Macbeth is a really dark play. It tells uh, the story of Scotland, sort of, part of Scotland. It's based in Scotland. 
Um, and it's a very bloody, dark, violent play. And so that's why um, if you're interested in the tragedies, that's probably one of the places to go is to Macbeth. Now, let's get to the other ones. If you are interested in the more romantic comedies, of course, there's Romeo and Juliet. This is not my favorite play. And we will be doing this walkthrough in February of 2021. So I'll be explaining to you a little bit more about why it's not my favorite play. If you would like to go through a Shakespeare play with us, then please check out the Shakespeare, William Shakespeare playlist because we've done several of them, many of which I will talk about today. But this one we will be going through in February of 2021. Um, it's one that everybody's familiar with and so therefore it's a little bit easier to keep track of. Um, the, what I mean by that is that sometimes the language of William Shakespeare can be tough to get into and when you're already kind of familiar with the story it makes it a little bit easier to follow. If you're watching this story unfold on screen or on stage it's a little bit easier to follow than it is to read it. Um, but a lot of people are familiar with Romeo and Juliet. I have a lot of feelings about Romeo and Juliet that I look forward to sharing with you all in February of 2021. The next book is, let's do my favorite one, and that is Othello. The reason I love this book is that it covers a topic that you don't think really was something to worry about at the time. I don't think about medieval England being a place where you have to think about racism. Um, against black people because they had not fully colonized the earth yet the English hadn't and uh, so there was still so much that it seemed like it was before his time that he wrote this. Uh, Othello is the story of a black man married to a white woman and all of the drama surrounding that that I think is really cool to to read and I also think it has one of the best villains in this book. So uh, also, this does have videos already. We read this for our launch, so that playlist is available. Next up is Hamlet. This is one that Shakespeare probably put most of his heart into, and it's about um, a son seeking vengeance for his father's death, and it was written a little bit after the time of his son's death. His son died uh, from a disease, um, and his son's name was Hamnet, and so that's why it's very much thought that this inspired, this was inspired somehow by, you know, the loss of his son and what he wished would have happened uh, with the life of his only son and the baby of his family, I think. No, he had another one after, Judith. Um, so Hamlet's a really great read. If you have watched The Lion King, you may be kind of familiar with it. Kind of, kind of. Um, next up is King Lear. This is a favorite of mine because this one's really honest about aging and family dynamics. Um, King Lear has gotten kind of old and he's trying to bequeath his kingdom to his favorite daughter and there's drama surrounding that. Um, and I saw this play live. It's the only Shakespeare play I've ever seen live at the Chicago Shakespeare Theater. If you have the, opp the opportunity to go to the Chicago Shakespeare Theater, I would implore you to do so. Um, please, if you have any interest, we've got Shakespeare quotes on t-shirts and things in the description box and a percentage of the proceeds we give to the Chicago Shakespeare Theater because we want to really support the art. Um, and they do a lot of really great work not just at the theater, but in the community. They do these Shakespeare in the Parks. I'm just going to talk about the Chicago Shakespeare Theater for a second. They do free shows, Shakespeare in the Park, um, for kids and young people. They go to different schools, I think, in, in Chicago. And so I'm just a huge fan of the Chicago Shakespeare Theater. I saw King Lear for my 22nd birthday there, and it was fabulous. It's a heart-wrenching story, especially because it's so real. All of us deal with having loved ones who are losing their memory. For me, it was both my grandfathers. I had one grandfather with dementia and another one with Alzheimer's. And so this spoke to my heart in a really special way. And I think it's something that all of us go through um, at some point in our lives. And to watch it unfold on stage is really powerful. Um, next, what, next one is The Taming of the Shrew, which is another one of his really great comedies. Um, it's very slapstick and there's um, a lot of nonsensicalness to The Taming of the Shrew, but also a lot of 
interesting views on men and women and specifically on women and what their dynamics should be like and what women uh, present as and so it's a great read um, from that standpoint and then the last one I can't believe I'm already done the last one on the list is Julius Caesar oh the taming of the shrew probably December I would guess um, is Julius Caesar and Julius, this book has, I think in Act 4, has one of the best monologues uh, that Shakespeare has written. And you may be familiar with it, Friends, Romans, Countrymen, Lend Me Your Ears, uh, from Mark Antony. And so I think that it's not my favorite play of his, but it's a good place to start. It tells a story that people may be familiar with, which is the assassinator, assassination of Julius Caesar. And... So because it's a story that you're familiar with, again, it's going to be a little bit easier to follow if you're just getting into Shakespeare. One of the things with all of these plays is to recognize that the language can be tough, but if you break it down, it's a little bit easier. The language can be tough, but if you are listening to it, it's easier. The language can be tough, but if you're watching it, it's easier. Um, Shakespeare broke English basically. I don't know what English was like before Shakespeare but it was nothing like what it has been like after Shakespeare and I don't know what storytelling was like before Shakespeare but after Shakespeare it has never been the same. All of our favorite movies um, and TV shows can take inspiration from Shakespeare. We have already consumed these stories a million times over and we just haven't known that they are very closely inspired by William Shakespeare and the reason that they're so great even now 400 years after Shakespeare was because he was so true about what he was talking about whether it was aging or the losing of a family member or men and women and the complexities of marriage or the desire for natural beauty in the world Shakespeare was really honest in a way that a lot of authors aspire to be, but so often fall short. So I love William Shakespeare. I love his plays. I love going through them here on Tea and Lit with you guys. And I hope that you can join us for some more Shakespeare. So what already do we have on the channel? We already have Othello. We already have Julius Caesar at the time of this. Uh, right now I'm working through Pericles, which is going to be for November. December, we will do probably The Taming of the Shrew, I would guess. January, we'll probably do A Midsummer's Night Dreams. These might be flip-flopped, I don't know. February, we are going to be doing Romeo and Juliet. Past February, I don't know what we will do. Um, these are just a few of the Shakespeare books. I've got more. Um... At some point, we'll be doing Macbeth because it's Keith's favorite. Um, and I would love to do Richard III, but we'll see about that. Again, I haven't found a copy at the bookstore yet, so we'll see how that goes. Thank you guys very much for watching. I hope that you will learn to appreciate William Shakespeare as much as I do. He holds a very special place in my heart. Um, and again, one of the best tips that I have for you is to watch Shakespeare. Uh, and read along while you're watching. You can do that too. All right, guys. Thank you so much. And I will catch you guys next time. Bye-bye.